Coming up in today's video, I'm going to be discussing five players at each position that the New Orleans Saints should target here in a couple of days at the NFL Draft. Now, I'm going to just go ahead and say this. I tried to be somewhat realistic with this. Like, obviously, the Saints aren't going to get a Caleb Williams. Obviously, they're not getting a Marvin Harrison Jr. So I tried to kind of pick some players that they could go in rounds one and two, and then maybe with those comp picks or like with a third or fourth round pick if they were able to trade into the third or fourth round. But before we dive into it, I need you to help me out. If you hate the Falcons, if you think that the Panthers are a garbage organization, if you know for a fact that Marshawn Lattimore is Mike Evans' daddy, and you know that Drew Brees is the real GOAT, hit that thumbs up icon. Give me a like on this video. Without further ado, let's kick this thing off with some draft targets. Quarterbacks are first. So in terms of some players that the Saints could look, Michael Penix, Maybe you can go and get him in round two. Spencer Rattler, I think that that's a player that you'd have to trade into the fourth or third round to possibly select. Michael Pratt, I really like that as an option with some of those comp picks. Kadon Slovis and Jordan Travis are some targets as well. Travis, to me, more of a seventh round slash UDFA option. But let's focus in on Michael Pratt, the six foot two, 217-pound quarterback, the four-year starter for the Tulane Green Waves. Now, let me tell you about this guy. In the four years he played, just under 10,000 yards across those four seasons. That is incredible production, ladies and gentlemen. Last year, or two years ago in 2022, over 3,000 yards. That's good. And he took a traditionally non-winning football team and program and turned them into the Cotton Bowl champions and proceeded to beat the current number one overall pick in Caleb Williams. Obviously, Caleb Williams didn't really play that game, but hey, point being, kick the hell out of the Trojans. And this is a player who does lack some size, has nice touch on the ball, and can push the ball downfield, but I do think he gets sacked a little too often. I think he holds on to the ball a little too much. But hey, a fifth-round comp pick, I would not mind Michael Pratt. Let's go to wide receivers sticking on the offensive side of the ball. Brian Thomas Jr., Malachi Corley, Xavier Leggett, Malik Washington, and Brendan Rice, the son of the GOAT. Now, Brian Thomas Jr., that's my first round option for the Saints. I don't think that the Saints are going to go wide receiver in round one, but if that's a player that they're interested in, I don't mind grabbing him at 14 overall. But let's kind of hone in. Not on Xavier Leggett. We all have talked about Xavier Leggett a couple times. Let's kick it to Malachi Corley and Malik Washington because there's this idea that Malachi Corley is the Yak King. Sure, maybe he is. But then that makes Malik Washington the Yak God. Look at the comparison of these two. 683 yards after completion versus 710. I'm, ladies, I don't care. Th that's really freaking good. Either way, that is really, really good production for both players. Now, the size favors Malik or Malachi Corley a little bit more. The receptions, obviously, you're going to have a little bit better production from Malik Washington because he had more receptions. But, I mean, this is still two really good options and two players who could be extremely effective with the ball in their hands. And I really think that Malachi Corley or Malik Washington would be excellent selections because of their yak ability and because of how dynamic they are with the ball in their hands. But if you had to pick one of these two guys, pick a wide receiver. Just give me a C for Malachi Corley or a W for Malik Washington. I'm excited to see what you guys have to say. And if it was me, man, I mean, I really, really like Malachi Corley. But you could twist my arm and maybe convince me to go Malik Washington. Just, just going to put that one out there. Running backs. You got Jonathan Brooks. You got Jalen Wright, the wide or the pass-catching running back. Very dynamic, kind of an Alvin Kamara 2.0. Trey Benson out of Florida State. Marshawn Lloyd out of the USC Trojans, who the Saints have met with and have had interest in. And Dylan Lauby, another player that the New Orleans Saints front office has met with. But... We've talked about Labby a handful of times on this show, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this prospect, but he is an incredible dual threat athlete. He is probably the best receiving back in this draft class, 
and the production is incredible. He was extremely explosive, tested really well. You could get extremely creative with his usage, especially with the kickoff rule and Clint Kubiak, I think, could have a field day with a guy like Dylan Lowby. But let's go to tight ends because that's a position in need for the New Orleans Saints, or at least a position that a lot of Saints fans are interested in. Brock Bowers, there's your round one guy. Jatavion Sanders, I think that's the tight end, too, in this draft class. Ben Sinnott, the tight end out of Kansas State. Theo Johnson and Jared Wiley, all options for New Orleans. But let me tell you about Jared Wiley. We've talked a lot about Jatavion Sanders. But at six foot six, 249 pounds, this player is really solid and contested catch. And he had five red zone touchdowns, which led all of FBS, and he tested really, really well. Now, this to me kind of feels like a Jimmy Graham type player. He can block somewhat well. Maybe he can offer a little bit more there in terms of uh, his ability on offense. I think that Jared Wiley would be an excellent selection and a really fun one nonetheless. Here's the offensive tackle targets for the New Orleans Saints. I think Olu Fashanu and Talisi Fuaga. Those are my top two for round one. I just don't see a world where Joe Walt falls to the Saints. If they trade up for him, different story, but those are your two picks I think you can get at 14 overall. Jordan Morgan out of Arizona, Amarius Mims, and Kingsley Suamatia are all options as well. And here's my thing. The offensive line needs to be picked in the first two rounds. You cannot wait until round five to address your offensive tackle need. That is just not something that I'm willing to do. You also could go for an interior lineman. I'm not crazy about Cesar Ruiz. I'm really not happy with how well James Hurst played last year. So maybe a Troy Fontenot who just can play anywhere. Or a Cooper Beebe. Or a Graham Barton. Or a Zach Zinter. Or a Christian Mahogany who the Saints have met with Mahogany. Maybe these are all options that could help bolster up the inside of the Saints offensive line because that part, that was where things were really, really bad. The tackles were bad, but the interior wasn't a whole lot better, to be quite honest. And if you disagree with me, I encourage you to go look up at the, look up the PFF grades across the offensive line. But be the GM for me. I want you to be Mickey Loomis. What should the Saints focus on in the draft this year? Type O for offense. Type D for defense. And let me know your thoughts. All right, so let's talk about the defensive tackles. Jerzon, Johnny Newton. The Saints were actually in attendance for his pro day just a couple of days ago. Byron Murphy out of Texas is a really good option. Rook Ororo is a really fun name to say, and he's actually a way more fun player to watch. Go look at his tape. Braden Fisk and Chris Jenkins are also options that I could see the Saints being interested in. But let's talk about Johnny Newton because the Saints, like I mentioned, were uh, present at his pro day and the pros and cons for this player. He has really good power and he has really nice pass rush moves, but he does miss some tackles here and there. And he's a little bit undersized, especially with his length. Giggity, sometimes length and size matters. Most times it doesn't. But in this situation, if you're having a nitpick for a con that's like he's slightly undersized, to me that says he's a really good prospect. He has a high motor, and he's really, really nice at, blo at shedding blocks and getting into the backfield and wreaking havoc. Now, edge rusher. I don't think this is a huge need for New Orleans because they signed Chase Young, but Jared Verse, Leitu, Latu, those have been two players that have been uh, linked to the Saints in, in past draft rumors. Jonah Ellis, the brother of former Saints legend Kana, Kaden Ellis, could be an interesting option. Marshawn Nealon and Jalen Green, those are two smaller school prospects. But just because they went to smaller schools does not mean they had smaller production. I mean, look at Jalen Green's numbers right here. 15 and a half freaking sacks. Over 21, over 20 tackles for loss. 21 to be exact, ladies and gentlemen. That's not bad. That, that's pretty freaking good. And I don't care if you're playing in the Sun Belt. I don't care if you're playing in the Mountain West Conference. I don't care if you're playing in the Big Ten or the Big... I don't give a shit. If you have 15 and a half sacks, that's pretty freaking good. And he, on top of that, he was also the Sun Belt Defensive Player of the Year, and he had insane production. All of this in just nine games for the JMU Dukes. Now, we got a lot more draft prospects to get to and targets that I want to discuss, but I just want to give a quick reminder. If you want to get one of the draft hats that the New Orleans Saints 
selections will be wearing on draft night, you can go at our link, chatsports.com slash Saints Draft. It's from Fanatics. We'll have uh, the link in the comment section and description of this video. They got flat bills. They got black. They got gray. They got curved bills. Whatever you want, we can get it to you. Just use our link. That way, Fanatics knows we sent you, and that way, you can support the show. So here's the linebacker draft targets that I want to talk about. Edrin Cooper. He's my linebacker one. Literally can do a little bit of, of everything. You can ask him to drop back in coverage. You can ask him to stop the run. What a, Junior Colson, another good option. Trevin Wallace, I actually really like this player. We're going to talk about him in a second. Tommy Eichenberg and Cedric Gray. Those are some more linebackers that you could look to help stop the run a little bit better. They're really solid in run defense. But let's dive into Wallace more as a prospect. He's six foot one, 327 pounds. Or he's actually 237 pounds. That's a typo on me. I had a dyslexia moment right there. I'm sorry. 237 pounds, 4.51 40-yard dash, and he is a two-year starter for the Kentucky Wildcats. He's a really, really uh, – has nice, really physical traits, and he has really good production, but he's pretty raw, and he tends to be reactionary with poor anticipation. And the thing about being a linebacker is you have to have – Good, re good reactions. You have to have good anticipation if you want to be successful in this league. I do think Trayvon Wallace with the size and the athleticism is a good option, but I could also see them going a different route. So let me know. Are you excited about the 2024 NFL draft? Just give me an E for excited or an N for eh, not really. I don't know how you could possibly type an N. This is the only time of year that every single team, all 32 teams, get to add to their roster and make improvements. So I don't know how you could possibly be typing in, but I'm spamming my E's. Cornerbacks, we're talking cornerbacks next. So Cooper DeGene, I reported that the Saints did meet with DeGene in the, or at the NFL Combine, talked to uh, sources extremely close to the player, and they told me that the Saints and him met, and there seemed to be some mutual interest and some mutual uh, fondness, if you will. Kool-Aid McKinstry, I think, would be a really good option. Jerrion Jones, Chris Abrams, Drain, kind of a nice slot corner nickel kind of guy. And Mike Sainstrill, he could also be a good nickel option. But in terms of the cornerback depth chart, I really like the starting group. I, th like this rotation of the starting three is really nice. Paulson Adebo took a really big leap last season, and he just continues to get better. Marshawn Lattimore, when he's healthy, he is one of the best – offense or defensive players in the league without a doubt one of the best cornerbacks in the league and Alante Taylor he struggled at the Nichols position he was much more successful on the outside but I think that he has the energy the mindset and the swagger to be able to hold down the middle of the field so I think that adding a nickel wouldn't be a bad idea but I could also see them you know waiting for later rounds to address the cornerbacks now, safety is kind of a tough one for me because I can make an argument and I can convince myself safety is a big need, but I could also sit here and be like, is it really? I mean, Tyron Matthews is still playing really good ball. Jordan Howden, he played really good last year. But Tyler Newbin, Jaden Hicks, Javon Bullard, Kalen Bullock, and Jalen Simpson are all players that I would love to see the Saints target. Simpson I mean, he could be a really, really good slot kind of player as well. He is effective in the middle. He was really good for the Aub or for Auburn last year. So I encourage you guys to check out the tape on some of these guys. Um, Tyler Newbin, Jaden Hicks, those are two of the top players in the safety draft class. So I expect them to not necessarily be available for the Saints unless they get them early round two or prioritize it in round one. Don't think that that's the likely case, though. So if you're tuning into our draft coverage, just type me in the comment section. We're going to be going live for round one. And then on top of that, depending on how things go, maybe the bosses will let us go live for the other two days as well. So I hope to see you there. And if I will see you there, give me a me in the comment section. And as always, y'all stay golden. See you next time.